Halo Infinite, despite not showing any gameplay at E3, is the most anticipated shooter coming from the recent conference. IGN explains why, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news update when it comes to Halo. If you like these news informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it greatly helps out the video and the channel a lot. Leave a comment down below what your most anticipated shooter is coming for us. I'm assuming it's going to be a little heavy on the Halo here, but if there's any other game you're really looking forward to, let me know in the comment section down below. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. And if you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date with anything Halo related, that's Halo Infinite, Halo MCC, Halo 5, and everything in between, make sure to tap subscribe with the bell. Keep you up to date with anything going on within Halo's universe and on the channel. So let's get right into the video here. So yes, we got another trailer, this E3 with the Discover Hope trailer, which actually ends up being the beginning part of Halo Infinite. And so far it looks fantastic. The visuals are on point. Uh, the acting in the game seems to be really good as well. Uh, they're actually taking some time to actually show like human emotions in this game, which is actually a really nice touch. And, uh, but still, there was no gameplay. A lot of people had a lot of ex expectations for that, but even with that expectation of no game and getting no gameplay, Halo Infinite still is on top as the most anticipated shooter to come for us gamers. Going to an IGN poll here. Let's get right into it. So it's 15,000 people from IGN.com readers were polled, and this is what the breakdown was with 29.2% Halo Infinite edges out Borderlands 3 at 28.5% which is just really great to see that this many people are still so excited to get in to play some Halo. Uh, I think it's just a lot of people are kind of been away for a while and now they're kind of like what's old is new again and I think they're kind of getting back to those feels of like wow this game does look something really special. It even edged out Doom Eternal which has gotten a lot of uh, media attention as well. But the one thing I really like about this is that COD Modern Warfare which is it's going to be its own reboot for the COD series is at 13.6% where the reboot of the Halo franchise is at 29.2%. So I'm quite happy about that. Now the, the COD reboot does have certainly have my interest, but I mean, it's not Halo, baby. And Halo Infinite's able to have this much anticipation with not really showing much when it comes to the game, game mechanics and general tone what they're trying to do for what the story's looking like or pretty much anything, really. We just seen these two trailers. They look really nice. They get us excited about it. And uh, that's about it. And so I think a lot of people were really looking forward to having gameplay for this E3, uh, obviously because um, you know, that's what we definitely want to see for sure, because we want to know what this game looks like and how it's going to play. Uh, and then also, it's just that with the extended dev time that 343 has had with Halo Infinite, that like we think that maybe some things might be a little different when it comes to uh, this last E3 that we had. Though pretty much every single Halo game has only ever shown gameplay at E3 the year of release. The year before has always been like a bit of a campaign trailer and the year before that it's just like an announcement kind of thing and not really showing too much. And so if this E3 fell right in line with what our expectations should have been when it comes to the E3 presentation and uh, we didn't get any gameplay though and I think that's mainly because of the Xbox Scarlet holding it back from really being able to sh be shown this year. I think Microsoft wanted to come in showing like an Xbox of the Xbox Scarlet family, giving you some visuals of it and giving more details of it. But I think uh, right now that I think actually the AMD chipset that they're going to be using for it was literally just announced like a week or two before E3. And so that the final build of these products are not actually set in stone yet. All they can just say are just words like, you know, 120 frames, 8k scarlet and that's kind of about it really they can't really go into much other details and obviously with uh, xbox scarlet and halo infinite launching on the same time scarlet is heavily relying on halo for it to move xboxes and so what they're going to want to do obviously for marketing purposes is that when you want to show off halo infinite Microsoft's gonna want to show that game off of very first impressions of gameplay and things like that. They're gonna want to show it on an Xbox Scarlet, whichever one I think the code names are Anaconda and Lockhart, whichever ones they want to do call it. I don't care. I'm just gonna call it Scarlet just in general here. But obviously that went there with Halo being a launch tile and the game that's meant to move Xboxes out of the stores and into people's rooms. They're gonna want to show Halo Infinite gameplay 
on the Xbox Scarlet, so it totally makes sense right there. So I bet you that 343 probably, they probably could have shown gameplay this year, but it probably would have been done on a PC with like specs. But obviously that would be some smoke and mirrors kind of, you know, stuff happening there. And a lot of times the internet does figure out that it's just smoke and mirrors. Uh, no pun intended to the Halo 2 demo from E3. People find out, people find out this kind of information. And so, you gotta make sure it's the real deal. And I do think I, I applaud Microsoft for not, you know, using smoke and mirrors or giving us a false presentation of what the game's actually going to look like. We've suffered with that in the past with other games, Watch Dogs in particular, when that game was announced and when it was actually shown, looked a little different. And so they like, want to show Halo Infinite on the Xbox Scarlet running at 4K, 120 frames if they can, even, I don't know. But uh, that's pretty much the reason why we didn't get any gameplay this year. It's not because Halo Infinite isn't ready, because I'm sure they are certainly ready for gameplay. I mean, we have people testing out gameplay right now. We have some pros right now, you know, fine tuning the multiplayer on the pro team over for Halo Infinite to make sure that's the best it can be. So obviously they have some form of a playable build right now. And you know that they have some missions kind of vaguely put together of what they want to play. And if they really want to focus on say the very first mission, then you can probably focus the whole dev team to make that first mission and then work out, flesh out the rest of them. There's so there's certainly possibilities here, but obviously, like I said, I think just that the Xbox Scarlet program was the thing that was holding back Halo Infinite being shown gameplay at E3. Though I do feel we'll have a chance to play a little bit of Halo Infinite sometime this year. That's just my speculation due to the flight program. That seems like there's going to be a bit more coming out this year. So I'm certainly looking forward to that as well. Also, I know that we're all extremely excited for this game. I've seen a lot of comments talking about how excited they are or how much they hate it or whatever in between. I think uh, right now we're kind of at a stage where we're just kind of letting our imaginations go wild because that's really all we can do right now. I think the main thing is that you got to can't go into Halo Infinite thinking it's going to be the perfect Halo because no Halo has been perfect. A lot of great Halos, but no perfect Halo. And so no game actually out there has ever really been perfect. And so that's why you have to kind of go into looking at this game. It's like, you look in this game going, hey, can I have fun with my free time with this game? Can this be the game where I can spend most of my free time enjoying? And I think Halo Infinite is shaping up to be just that. But you can't go into looking at it. if there's any kind of flaw or anything that you don't like about it. It's going to be terrible. It's the worst thing ever. Like, no, you can't go with that kind of mindset. Like, I really liked Halo 5. Like, obviously, there's a ton of flaws with that game as well, especially on the campaign side of things. But I've put a lot of time into that game because I have fun playing it. It's really great. The multiplayer is fun. So I'm going to keep playing it. And that's why you kind of have to look into it as, like, can this be the game where I really enjoy? And that's one thing you kind of have to take in consideration when it comes to you know, feeling what you're, if you're going to be buying this game or not. Because even a lot of people hated what Halo 3 changed from Halo 2, making the BR projectile with a little bit of a random spread. A lot of people didn't like that. Some people do really like that. Uh, some people really liked the equipment that was added to Halo 3. Some people really didn't like that. And there was a lot of things that had to be changed in Halo 3 to make it like a competitive game mode, which still has a lot of issues. I mean, hell, bloodshots are still very much a thing in Halo 3. And that game is widely held as the best Halo, but certainly still has its flaws because every game does. And so you basically have to look at Halo Infinite as the same light as well. Just give it a fair shot. Look at it, so like, look, like I said, look at it in the perspective of can I have fun with this game rather than is this the best game? Ultimately, I think that would help manage all of our expectations as well. But hey, Halo Infinite is still the most anticipated shooter out there right now, according to IGN. So hey, things are looking great for the franchise, guys, and I'm really excited about this game coming out for us. And also just, you know, keep your uh, expectations kind of uh, moderate, you know, don't expect the moon, expect the... You know, it's one of those things where you can shoot for the stars, but if you make it to the moon, it's still just as good. Kind of that kind of feeling, if you know what I mean. And also, that's also the reason why we didn't really get much gameplay. I'm assuming it's because they wanted to show it on the Scarlet. Scarlet's are not finally set in stone what their specs are going to be. So, 
hence no gameplay so that's about it guys so thank you very much for watching i greatly appreciate it. if you liked this video please make sure to tap that like button it's like greatly helped out the video and channel a lot leave a comment down below where your thoughts are what your most anticipated game is of the e3 uh, obviously or at least for shooter wise i'm sure a lot of us are going to say cyberpunk because that game looks freaking awesome and if you're new to the channel stay updated with anything halo related make sure to tap subscribe with the bell and if you're new to the channel or miss any content from me check out the videos on the screen right now i'll catch you on the next video Peace out.